Welcome to today's East Boston open discussion, getting to know the candidate Adrian Madro. We wanted to say uh, that East Boston's uh, original East Boston open discussion group is, is available at www.eastboston.buzz. We're, so we're here today with Adrian Madro and his girlfriend Ariel Lance and you're trying to get to better know them as a, on a personal level. Less about politics and more about uh, who they are and who the candidate is uh, for state rep. So if you're unfamiliar with Adrian, Adrian is a son of East Boston, grew up right here in East Boston, right here in Eagle Hill. He attended Boston Latin School. He went ahead from there on to Tufts University and studied and received his bachelor's degree there and then moved on to get his master's degree as well from Tufts University in uh, urban and, planning. Uh, now he's here today, but probably more prominently known in East Boston for his role as chief of staff, along with the outgoing state rep, Carla Basil. So uh, today's conversation is, 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 is less about politics and more about getting to know the candidate a little better. So let's talk with, uh, with Adrian. So Adrian, now obviously your, your mother is pretty well known here, Deborah Cave, she's pretty well known here in the community for her leadership role in the Eagle Hill Civic Association. Um, but, you know, maybe you can talk to us about your, your family, your friends, your neighbors, and how that upbringing has brought you to where you are as, uh, as a man here, as a resident, as an activist, as a political candidate, uh, and where you are here today. Sure. Well, uh, like you said, I'm born and raised here and, and uh, growing up with my mom running the Eagle Civic Association, I grew up with a very strong sense of community, uh, civic engagement, community activism. Uh, at a very young age, my mom was plugging me into community cleanups. We used to have this thing in Eagle Hill called the Home and Garden Tour, mm -hmm. uh, where we toured around many of the Victorian uh, homes and, and uh, you know, some beautiful gardens and I you know, led the tours. I was one of the tour guides. Um, Needless to say, uh, many of my friends and family members have been plugged into this community activism, so that's kind of what I grew up in and what was instilled in me at a very young age. Uh, but the community, growing up in East Boston, is a very special thing because it is such a diverse community, being the immigrant town, uh, and you're constantly surrounded by people who are not like you, and I think that is very grounding, and uh, it really opens your eyes to what the world has to offer uh, because you get to learn about uh, folks from so many different walks of life. And I think that's a very special thing about growing up in East Boston. I had a very diverse group of friends growing up, and uh, that's something I feel very fortunate about. Yeah. So would you, uh, would you be able to identify maybe one or two people that have been a special influence on, on who you are and where you, you know, as far as where you are today, thanks to them that you can say, hey, they've been an inspiration to you uh, in your life? Well, I definitely have to say, uh, you know, folks in my family, in particular my mom, mm -hmm. uh, she is a lifelong educator. She ran an alternative high school for at-risk youth. Uh, at the time, it was the largest alternative uh, program in the city. It was called City Roots. It had sites in every neighborhood across the city. My mom was the administrator. Uh, in addition to that, which is a very big job, uh, she you know, ran the Hope Civic Association, was involved in a number of nonprofits. She's the president of the Social Center Board. Uh, she was a founding member of Excel Academy. Uh, she helped bring it to East Boston. Uh, and in addition to all that, she still found time to be a great mom, cook mm -hmm. wonderful dinners, uh, really be a matriarch in the family. And that's something that I've always respected and admired about her because I don't know how she does anything. Uh, and she was always pushing me to be better along with my father. My father is an immigrant from Italy and uh, education was always very important in my family. And uh, they always pushed me to be a better person and to keep furthering myself. And um, you know, growing up in the family that I did really helped. Uh, make me the man I am today, and I'm very thankful for that. That's we're good. a very, very close knit family. That sounds good. Excellent. Uh, we're here with Ariel here. Ariel Glantz. <laughs> she is uh, the girlfriend of Adrian Madra. And so, so Ariel, maybe uh, uh, now for clarification. Now you, now you and Adrian have been going out for for how long now? Five years. Five years. Okay. And uh, maybe you can tell us uh, a little, little bit about the community to the well to the community about uh, how you met and that kind of maybe what sparked your your relationship with with Adrian. Sure. So Adrian and I both attended Tufts University, and I was a child development major. He was also a child development major along with anthropology, and we both took a class together where we spent the entire semester learning about New Orleans 
and designing an outdoor learning space for a school in the ninth ward. Um, we really got to know each other during this class. The first day I saw him, I was excited to meet him and uh, he was actually leading the construction group that would design the exact specifications of the outdoor learning space and then would lead the dis 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 uh, construction uh, once we were down there. And um, no girl signed up for the construction group and so I thought that I would do it. And uh, because of that, we got to know each other uh, in an academic setting and uh, started to hang out outside of class and started going to class together. And um, actually one of our favorite professors, Chip Gidney, uh, we, we call him our matchmaker because of this. <laughs> and he, um, he would tease us, uh, you know, the, the second and third week, he, he would tease us for flirting. So <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny. Um, and Immediately we started connecting. We are from pretty different places. I grew up in a suburb of New York City, um, but it wasn't nearly as diverse as East Boston. And I credit Adrian for not only bringing me here and exposing me to East Boston, which I now love, um, but just for giving me a different perspective and getting to meet all the wonderful people that I've met here. Um, about a year into um, us dating, um, I moved out here with him and just began commuting uh, over to Tufts where I also continued to get my master's degree. While he was doing his master's, I did mine in child development with a focus on law and policy. Okay. Um, and now I'm at law school and we're still together. So. That's great. <laughs> Congratulations on that. So, has there been any talk about maybe popping the question <laughs> or... Yeah, there's definitely been talk. Okay. Uh, you know, right now, obviously, we've been together a while, and uh, I love her very much, and she's a, a wonderful partner. And throughout this whole thing, she, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better uh, partner in this experience. She's really been a, a strong rock for me sure. uh, through this campaign. Uh, you know, right now, obviously, I'm focused on winning an election, but once once the, the election winds down. Oh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to cross that bridge. Okay. <laughs> I see you've already got a commitment in the form of uh, uh, your dog here, Rusty. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, the camera's got a view of the dog here, but, uh, He's but a great uh, dog. so yeah, so your dog is, now you got your dog, uh, uh, Rusty, at a local shelter? Yes. Okay. A shelter in Sterling, Mass. Uh, he was from Canada, I believe, right? I think he was from Quebec. Yeah, they and, found uh, him on the street. He is a, uh, he's part Rhodesian Ridgeback. Okay. And these dogs, we didn't know when we, when we got him, but these dogs uh, were bred to hunt lions yep. in Africa. And when they get, when he gets aggressive or very excited, a ridge forms right on his back and the no hair kidding. goes the opposite way. It looks like he has a mohawk. Yeah. First time we saw it, we didn't know what we were looking at. Yeah. But, you know, then we did a little research and yeah. uh, he's just a wonderful dog. He loves to run uh, and he's a, he's a wonderful partner. Uh, That's great. Uh, so, uh, Ariel, the, I know one thing being involved with, in, a, in a relationship with a politician, it can sometimes be difficult to share your companion with the, the public at large. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, how that has affected you. Now, obviously, uh, Adrian's certainly been a, been a popular guy here around town. I'm sure he gets a lot of uh, inquiries as you go out in public anywhere. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, sharing a, your, your life that you partner here with, uh, with the rest of the public? Well, I have to say, um, although he is very busy right now, I think that we've both gotten pretty used to having our own busy schedules. Um, he started working for Representative Basil while he was still a senior at Tufts, and so he was going to school and working full time, mm -hmm. um, and then continued his master's while also working for him, so he was again working full time and going to school. And then he's always been going to community events. This isn't just something that he started for the campaign. He's been attending community events. He's been on the boards of a bunch of different nonprofits in the community. So um, you knew what you were so getting into. I, I, I've seen this coming. Okay. Um, <laughs> at least the time that, you know, I know that I need to share him. And I honestly feel lucky that the community gets to experience uh, the Adrian that I do because he is absolutely genuine when he's out there. That's the same exact guy that I know. Okay. Um, and not to mention, I'm really busy too, so sure. it's okay. And yeah. I go to school and I also work and, um, you know, so the time that we do spend together, we certainly cherish and we enjoy each other's company, but right now there's not a lot of it and that's okay. We'll yeah. get it soon. Okay. <laughs> so when you, when you do get the, I know obviously you've 
clearly been busy on your, your campaign trail, uh, doing a lot of events. And uh, but when you when you take a moment to step aside on a date night, do you like to go somewhere particular here in East Boston or, or elsewhere? We love to go out to dinner. We recently celebrated our 50th anniversary. We went out to dinner at the, uh, the Parker Restaurant, the Omni Parker Hotel. Which Congratulations for your fifth year. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, you know, we keep things low key, grab dinner, go see a movie, go see a play. Sure. Uh, we both uh, just as happy staying at home, cuddling up on a couch, and you know, we're both uh, avid readers, and you know, we're just as happy cuddling up on a couch, each with a book, and Great. you know, enjoying each other's company. Sure. We do love all the local restaurants here. Um, when we when we get dinner together, which again in the recent weeks has not been all that often, but when we do get the time, we love to check out all the different cuisines here: Vietnamese, Mexican, uh, Italian, really everything. Mexican. We just love yeah. it. We love okay. it. You don't have to leave your own neighborhood. You can get all the different wonderful types of food. Very true. Yes, you get a lot of one of the many special things about East Boston. Yeah. Um, so uh, before, just to get a little, little, little uh, example here, but before we actually began taping the, the interview, we were talking and uh, they actually, uh, Adrian and Ariel, both mentioned that they've been visiting some state capitals uh, around the U.S. And so maybe you can talk to us about, uh, and obviously it's uh, kind of a proposal as a, you know, if you had any, any option in the world to go travel anywhere, uh, where would you ideally want to go and visit? So uh, there are certainly places outside of the U.S. that we both would love to go to. Um, we want to go to this island called Palawan that is, I believe, in the Pacific. Um, the Philippines, maybe, yeah. It might be nice right now in the yeah, uh, and, New England winter. Uh, not only that, but we, we've both seen pictures and read that it's supposed to be one of the greatest scuba diving locations in the entire right. world. And we're both scuba divers. It's actually one of the first things that we connected over oh, really? when we met yeah. because it's not the most common hobby, especially right. um, in the younger population. Sure. So we connected over that immediately and started exchanging, oh, where, where have you been diving? Where have you been diving? And um, we both love it, and we're lucky that we get to go about once a year. Um, my family is also all divers, so we, we get to go with them, um, and that's right. really lovely. However, as much as we love going outside of the country, we love exploring this country. Um, I think you've talked to a lot of Americans, and uh, international travel is really common, and yet people haven't been to many of our own states. Um, so a few years ago, uh, while Adrian was working at the Massachusetts State House, which is a beautiful building, as you know, um, and has a ton of a ton of history inside, uh, you know, we were driving up to Vermont and we were passing through, and Adrian said, "Why don't Why don't we go check out their capital and see what that's like? Maybe it's similar to Boston. Maybe it's a little different." Um, and Next thing you know, we're in Montpelier, and uh, it's a beautiful building, and we're looking around, we're taking pictures, and we look at each other and we say, why don't we make this a thing? Why don't we start visiting all the state capitals? So uh, that was about two and a half years ago. We visited 15 capitals together wow. since then. Um, to be fair, almost all of those capitals could fit in the state of California, so it's, <laughs> it's only going to get harder from here. The right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The northeast and uh, east the east coast, east coast. mostly. Okay. Um, you know, once That's we great. have a little more time, and sure. you know, we would love to visit all of the capitals. You know, sometimes people say, "Well, there's there's nothing to do in Bismarck, or there's nothing to do um, in Helena." Right. But the thing is, is that. There's beautiful things to see in all of these states, and sure. there's history to learn mm -hmm. at all of them. And oh, yeah. we want a reason to get out there. And right. um, you know, we don't just go to the capital; we check out the surrounding cities right. and areas. So right. we've been really enjoying it so far, just learning about our own country mm -hmm. and yeah. getting more acquainted with it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm sure that's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, music. So, what if we were to uh, to go out to your car right now? What? What, the, what radio station would, it, would we find it tuned into? You know, or what I, CD do you have in your car, or what MP3? I, I uh, really like most types of music. Um, okay. You know, you, you, you would find classic rock probably on the radio right now, <laughs> uh, but I'm just as happy, you know, listening to Frank Sinatra, jazz, um, hip hop. I mean, it really, you know, I, I have a, I'm easily pleased when it comes to music. Right. Uh, we do like going out to, to jazz concerts at places like Scholars yep. and, uh, and, and other venues around the city. Uh, 
And Zoomix is going to be having their Zoomix is having their raw yeah. concert. I love their jazz series that yeah. they had. That was really fun. I was actually a Zoomix kid myself. Sure. Uh, growing up, before I moved to the firehouse, and I learned yeah, to you, play. Did you play any instruments? Yeah, or? I learned how to play the piano and the drums there. I also sang in a chorus, although that didn't last too long. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful asset for kids in this community that went to have Zoomix. It really is. Completely agree. Yeah. 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 Um, so one thing that uh, that some people have been asking me to ask you about is uh, if you weren't um, if you weren't today going to be mm -hmm. a state rep candidate, mm -hmm. uh, if you weren't involved in politics, if for whatever reason you were not involved in politics in your life, what would you be doing? I could see myself doing a whole host of things uh, as long as it was having a positive impact. That to me is very important. Uh, first of all, I'd still be in law school. I'd mm -hmm. take a leave of absence. I was doing I was doing uh, law school Suffolk nights. Okay. Uh, so I'd be, you know, in my second semester and, you know, diving into that. Uh, but in terms of uh, professional employment, I, I, I would find myself either, you know, somewhere in government that I'm helping people or somewhere in the nonprofit sector. Uh, to me, it's, it's very important that you're making a positive impact. I learned that from my family. You know, like you mentioned earlier, I come from a family of uh, community activists who've been fighting to make this community better and, you know, really the city as a whole. Um, so I would very much fall in line. That's, you know, that, that's what I'm interested in. That's what I love to do. Uh, so it, whether it was helping folks, uh, you know, get housing, uh, whatever it may be. I mean, it could really run the gamut from social services to other things. Um, but I think, you know, I'd be in government or the nonprofit sector. That's good. Okay. Um, so <laughs> now I have to tell you, I was at, I was personally at one of the events for one of your fellow candidates, uh, Joe Ruggiero, the other night. And I have to say, he put on some dance moves on the dance floor at uh, Hacienda. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I've got to ask you, you know, with the, with the sizable Latino community here in East Boston, and knowing that uh, dancing and music is kind of popular with them, so could you put your dance moves out on the dance floor? I can definitely hold my own. All right. She's a great dancer. So she shows, she shows me the little steps, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He always says, I don't know which way I should go or what I should do, and I say, just come out and feel the music, and then he does. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, uh, so maybe outside of the, the political world, um, you know, maybe uh, give us a little insight on, on what it is that you enjoy to enjoy doing recreationally, for fun, for uh, just getting out and getting away from, sure. uh, from your daily lives. Sure. When it, I know that's always <laughs> right now, that might be difficult during your your campaign year. But uh, when you do get a chance, what is it that you enjoy doing? Uh, as I mentioned before, we love to read. Yeah. Uh, we're just as happy watch going to watch a movie. Sure. Watching a good uh, TV show. Um, we've actually uh, just started watching Marco Polo. The, okay. Uh, yeah. That series is popular. Yeah. Which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, love to travel. Love to take Rusty for walks on the uh, on the Harbor Walk. We always enjoy that. Such a beautiful view. Uh, and then, you know, I grew up playing sports and I still love playing a, a game of pickup basketball uh, or things of that nature. Um, you know, the, the new city yards are done over and it's, uh, I haven't, and unfortunately I haven't had a chance to play as much as I'd like, right. going from Carlos' campaign to my own campaign. Right. Uh, but, I mean, particularly in the nice weather, uh, I love going out there and playing to pick up basketball outside. It's sure. a, something that's very therapeutic for me. Right. Um, yeah, things like that. So, uh, speaking of Carlo's campaign now, now obviously you've been working with, with Carlo for, for some time, and uh, so when it became clear to you that you were going to have an opportunity to, to kind of take things to the next level and have mm -hmm. you run your own campaign, uh, did, you, did you both kind of come to a decision and say, hey, this is, you know, you indicated to, to Ariel that, hey, this is what I want to do, and was there, was there some sort of a conversation that there was. led up to that? There was. We had a conversation as a family. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I, I knew I couldn't do this alone and that it would take sacrifice from my entire family. Sure. And, uh, you know, everybody encouraged, uh, encouraged me to do it. And once I knew I had the support of my family, of Ariel, my parents, and my other family members, uh, I knew that I, I would do it and I would take the plunge. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. I love getting out there, knocking on doors, uh, talking to people, having real conversations with voters, hearing their concerns, uh, and uh, sharing my vision for the community. That's correct. Right. Well, I just want to uh, to say thank you for thank, thank you, you both Adrian and Ariel. Thank you for coming on the interview today, and I uh, appreciate your extending some time here for us to get to to have the East Boston voters an opportunity to be able to get to understand who you are as a person, 
not just purely from the political aspect, but uh, from a personal aspect. And again, I appreciate your coming on here uh, to do the interview today. Um, Thanks so, for asking those questions. Yeah, no, not a problem. So again, uh, Paul Rogers here from East Boston Open Discussion. You can continue the conversation at eastboston.buzz. Thank you again. Don't forget to vote March 3rd.